Hello. Hello, everyone, and I hope all of you are doing very well. Uh, welcome to this webinar about Cambridge Online Mathematics. Cambridge Online Mathematics is the online learning platform of Cambridge University Press. Um, this webinar will provide an overview of the key functions and tools that teachers can use to enhance digital learning. I'm very happy to see so many of you joining today. And please say a little hello in the chat function so we can say where you are joining from today. My name is Tina and I'm the Digital Product Marketing Manager at Cambridge University Press International Education. And I'm also joined by my colleague Laura, who is a Product Marketing Executive. Today's speakers are my colleague David Higginson, who is a Product Manager. He looks after the systems that deliver the maths products. Our guest speaker today is Ms. Siti Zaleha from Malaysia. She's an IBDP and IGCSE maths teacher. After the presentation, we will have a Q&A uh, at the end of the webinar. Just a few housekeeping notes before we begin. So there are the chat and Q&A functions that you should see on the right side of your Zoom screen. So please submit any questions you'd like us to cover at the end in the Q&A section. And you may use the chat for general comments and hellos and discussion. So confirming the agenda. So next I will pass on to City. Hello, hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today. So before we start, we would like to understand a little bit better about you, all of you, um, maths teachers out there. So we would like you to contribute on the chat about what are your current teaching challenges. So please do feel free to share as many points as possible and we will kickstart our webinar right after this particular part. Okay, so thank you so much for sharing. I'm sure there are many more coming, but I've captured some of the input that you've shared. So next, what we'll do is I'm going to go over um, some of the current challenges that we are facing uh, based on my personal experience, and we will try and match it where possible. So the general trends and common challenges um, for teaching maths in particular, um, the first one is adjusting, uh, particularly about syllabus change. So I know that um, some of you also mentioned um, this 
So when there's a syllabus change, um, especially with our IGCSE um, starting 2025, so there will be a follow-up efforts that we need to do as well. Um, and that includes revising the lesson plans, updating teaching materials, and as well as incorporating new teaching um, strategies to align with the new state standards. Um, and the next part is engagement. And I know that some of you also mentioned this, like Gloria, I've captured that you said about keeping students challenged all the time. Um, so finding innovative ways to make maths relevant interesting and enjoyable for learners. So some of the main examples that we all are aware of is real life applications, hands-on activities, as well as interactive lessons to make maths meaningful to learners. And this is when this webinar is about, because the whole idea is if we have a platform where things could have been done seamlessly from the interactive bit, we could have spent more time uh, in our planning to also focus on how else can we spend more time to focus on the real life applications as well as the hands-on activities. Um, and then we also have um, the common challenges about technical integration. So tech is um, rap rapidly changing and we need to prepare our learners for it. So integrating tech effectively into our teaching may involve using educational softwares. And I'm sure there are tons out there, but sometimes when we select, we also have these nagging thoughts about how aligned are these particular activities or questions um, with the syllabus that we are teaching. But sometimes we just pick and choose because the activities are interactive, but also we need to valid, uh, you know, um, check the validity, whether it's parallel with the syllabus or not. Um, online resources and interactive tools. And the last bit is about providing support. So um, Kalpana and then Haslinda, uh, Vaishali also talked about this. Um, we may need to provide additional support and resources to help these students overcome their challenges, especially when we have um, different ability students in the same classroom. Um, some of you mentioned about uh, differentiation as well, like Kevin and Hita. So what the core part in providing support is offering extra practice. It's about individualized instruction and how can um, this particular platform helps us moving forward. So these are like uh, some of the input that I have captured from your sharing as well as from my own input. So I've, I went through, um, I have like a early sneak peek about Cambridge Online Mathematics, and these are the interesting findings from my point of view. So I'm just going to go over this very briefly before David will just tell you all the surprises and all uh, things included. So the first part is it's standardized because you can go to the online platform and then you know you can access the learner's book. So whatever you have in the physical book will be what you have um, in this platform as well. And it is structured as well in the sense that the contents from the learner's book is structured and planning friendly. And there are section whereby it contains all the contents arranged in order from the learner's book. So you don't have to um, you know, find resources and try to overlap things because now everything is just as the same, but it appears in a more interactive and engaging uh, platform. The exercise, they are relevant and easy to grab questions provided. We have like the resources part where it has all the interactive worksheets for each given topic. We have this one part for walkthroughs and quizzes. And this is something that some of you mentioned earlier, like, you know, we need more practice uh, questions, but individualized. So it offers a step-by-step -step examples and quick quizzes from four different levels of difficulties. Um, we have Scorcher. Sure, David will speak more about this. So this is when the platform offers um, some sort of like an ongoing competition based activities around the topic and has leaderboard and everything. And last but not least, the task manager. It allows you to assign work uh, to groups, individuals or class. So this is very important when we want to tackle differentiation bit of our teaching and learning. Next one. And I think I will hand over to David now.
Yeah, thank you very much, City. Hi, everybody. It's lovely to be able to speak to you all today. Um, that's sort of a little sneak preview of what's going to be what's going to be coming up. We're going to be going through a lot of those in a bit more detail and be able to say a little bit more about them all. But just to start off with, I wanted to mention that very soon all of our uh, Cambridge Online Maths products are going to be available through our platform, Cambridge Go. Um, at the moment, that's our lower secondary titles. So those are from seven to nine. And also the new um, IGCSE publishing that's going to be uh, publishing a little bit later this year. Um, that's also going to be available through Cambridge Go. Now, the examples that we've got today are all going to be coming from um, uh, Learners Book 7. Uh, but a lot of the features, a lot of the functionality you're going to find across all of those lower secondary uh, titles and also the upcoming IGCSE ones as well. So it's representative of everything that's going to be there. OK, so I think uh, the first little bit then, if we start to go through and we can show you some of those different bits that City was talking about. When you first uh, log in uh, and open the product, you'll land on this dashboard. And this has a few of the most common sort of uh, bits that you'll want to be accessing. And it's also uh, how you're going to get around all of the different features. So uh, to pick up on the first bit that City mentioned then, um, first of all, we organize everything by um, uh, the book. So on the next slide, you'll see that uh, the structure is exactly the same. We use the same chapters, uh, all of the same topics. So everything lines up. You'll be able to find all of the resources for each of those different areas, including all the extra stuff that we'll talk about uh, for the book there. And uh, we can see what that book content looks like as well on the next slide. So here, um, this is where you've got all of those same explanations, um, all of the worked examples, all of that material is available online so that uh, uh, anyone can access that uh, in the digital product. Then we get into some of the more uh, sort of interactive bits. So uh, the first one then is the exercises. So all of the exercise questions from the book are included in the product and are available to be submitted online. So what you can see here is um, each of the questions will be there and the students will get a workspace for them to put their working into. They can type their working in and there are uh, maths keyboards to help with certain symbols. Um, or they can draw, which is obviously more useful for certain types of question. And then finally, we let uh, everybody upload an image for, uh, to show their working. So they could take a photograph if they've been working on uh, paper and be able to upload that. And something that we've heard in our research is that um, there is some uh, sort of a need for students to be able to demonstrate that it's their working. So I don't know if you found that in, in your uh, in sort of your experience as well. Yeah, so for us, it's it's very obvious because for teachers, because we know like there's only one answer, but sometimes we also want to see like how the learners are actually working their way out for it. And the last little bit on here is that these are self-assessed. So the student gets to review how they've done and, and can see their answer there. And they can um, uh, adjust how they did on that little slider to show whether they were really unhappy and found it really difficult or if they if they um, really happy with it and, and didn't find it a problem. And there's also uh, the option for them to set a flag against the question. And this is useful if they had a particular challenge with it. And now when we look on the next page, all of this is available for you as a teacher to be able to look at in a number of different reports. So you'll be able to go in and see the answers that the student has submitted, um, and you'll be able to add feedback for that to be able to um, uh, send that back to the student. But those red flags, there are a few different reports that you can see which will let you look across a class to see whether a particular student has put a lot of red flags in, and so that might be something that needs you want to be able to follow up with, or if uh, a lot of students are all putting red flags on the same question or the same types of question, then again, you can sort of see um, at a glance whether that's something that you might want to be able to come back to or, or need to be able to follow up with a little bit more. The next bit then is around um, some additional resources. So we add in additional resources for each of the topics um, to help with uh, more practice and more opportunities for learning. Uh, and so you'll find that many of them come with additional worksheets. So um, again, these are different activities, different um, questions. Um, obviously, some topics uh, work a little bit better if you're working on pen and paper, if you're trying to do constructions, for example. That's really hard to do digitally. So again, these worksheets can really help out with that. 
And there's also a number of uh, interactive uh, sort of digital widgets, which again, a little um, interactives that students can, can use uh, to explore an idea or to practice some different questions, makes it a little bit more engaging. So there's a little bit extra there as well. If I could add as well, David, mm. this is something that's superbly useful for us teachers as well, because especially to um, some of us that uh, have to teach uh, learners with different abilities in the classroom, having all these ready to be used uh, means there will be lesser amount of time spent for us to prepare a multiple um, options of resources. And that's how this will help uh, for our planning time as well. And just because I've just because I've seen it in, in chat there, uh, yes, these worksheets can all be printed off their PDF so they can be printed and, and used offline. The next uh, sort of uh, feature that we have there is a uh, something called a walkthrough. Now I quite I quite like walkthroughs. These are this is one of the bits that I, I think is really useful. So uh, many questions uh, when we're inputting them digitally are just asking for the answer and we do that. We'll show that in a minute. But what walk walkthroughs do is actually ask the student to break down the process of how to do that particular calculation. So rather than going straight from the question to the answer, it's trying to get them to think about the different steps they need to go through. And um, so they've got a process for how to tackle each different type of question, whether that's simplifying something or just identifying what the next thing they need to do is. And there's feedback as well to support them through this. So if they get it correct, then they'll get some reinforcement. But if they get that step wrong, that's fine. They'll get some feedback to help nudge them in the right direction. And if they continue to get it wrong, ultimately, we will give them the correct answer and let them move on. Because these aren't about trying to test or assess it necessarily. We're trying to support the, the, the learner uh, to understand what they need to do. So we don't want to get them blocked or stuck anywhere. So if they're really struggling, we'll just give them a little nudge and let them move on. But that feedback's there to help support them if they're, if they're struggling. And it helps as well, uh, basically, for learners to verbalize their own thought process. Because more often than not, when we ask learners to explain in words, they just said, oh, I just did it in my head. I didn't quite know how to actually explain the process uh, from a step-by-step -step method. Yeah. OK, the next little bit then, and again, this was... Uh... This was one of the ones that was uh, teased at the start is the scorches. So scorches are a little bit different. Um, they're a sort of competition based activity against the clock. You get asked 10 questions uh, to try and answer really, really quickly. Um, at the end, you do get feedback. So again, you can see what the correct answer is if you've got something wrong um, and the students can compete to get a high score, which will sit on a leaderboard for their class. Now, it is also I like to just sort of mention this as well students do get the choice to opt out of that leaderboard if that's something that they're not comfortable with I'm not forcing everybody to have to compete like that I know that not every student will want to but for those that do uh, scorches provide sort of a different type of questioning um, that can be a bit more fun and a bit more um, uh, interactive and this is good as a motivational booster as we go like from lesson to lesson as well because sometimes uh, due to like the different strengths of maths, students may find um, their abilities shine in one compared to the other. So this is like a good and overall chance for everyone to basically um, express their abilities and then see where it gets them from the leaderboard. And then the next little bit is around some topic quizzes, which we have. Um, so topic quizzes are available for, for each of the different topics, obviously. We have them at four different levels. So level one are very simple, uh, very basic uh, questions. Going up through the difficulty, level three, you're probably gonna need to start using a pen and paper to answer. Um, and you would probably need a few different steps to get through a, a calculation. And then finally, the challenge questions start to bring in some of the other topics as well. So you might have something that needs you to understand a few other topics to be able to um, to be able to answer those. So there are those sort of difficulties. You can see there, there's quite a few questions for each one. We tried to have, I don't know, between like six and 10 questions at each different level. So for each topic, you know, you're adding on a good number of different questions there. Uh, these ones are all auto-marked. So the students can simply uh, select their answer. You'll see that they're often multiple choice or they're 
uh, they're filling the blanks. They, we ask the student just to type their answer in um, so they can get their uh, result really quickly, whether they got it right or wrong. And again, all of this is available as a report for you as a teacher, so you can see how students are doing, uh, whether they've uh, answering the questions easily or, or finding them a bit more difficult. So uh, lots more questions around the topic in addition to what you're getting in the book. And City, I mean, extra questions is a really important thing for maths, isn't it? Yeah, extra, but also this is extremely convenient because extra and categorized in terms of level. Yeah. <clears throat> and obviously it's tied to those particular topics as well. So, you know, you can really uh, tune those things in. And these questions here then build into uh, the next feature, which is a test builder. So uh, within the platform, then there is a test builder that allows you as the teacher to build a completely custom quiz that you can then assign to your students. And I mean, this is really good for if you want to have a, a quiz that has uh, some different questions across those levels. So rather than just having one level at a time, you can now mix them up. Um, or you can start to build a quiz that has questions from multiple different topics, again, depending on where you are in your teaching and what you're looking, what you're looking to do. Um, so the builder itself is quite straightforward. You can use a little wizard to try and help speed things along, um, and the system will pick out some random questions based on the, the topics that you select and the difficulty that you select. Uh, and then you've got the option to edit those as well afterwards. So you can always change the order and add and remove search for more questions, all of those sorts of things. Uh, these can then be assigned online. So uh, students can log in and answer the questions um, digitally, but you can also print these off and have these as a, as a physical question as well. Um, uh, and to help things along there, you can also get the answer key automatically generated as well. So if you are marking these by hand, um, you don't have to worry and go through all it itself. Um, once you've created that test, the answer key will be there available for you as well. Now, for the ones that are, are answered online and done digitally, again, there's a report there that's available so that you can see the scores that students are getting and you'll be able to um, go in and see their answers as well. So if they've got things wrong, you can see which which of the options they were selecting or be able to pick up uh, uh, sort of where they where they uh, yeah, where they went wrong when they were answering that question. So the reports are really useful to dig into as well. So yeah, this is a really putting, powerful tool. Yeah, go on, City. Putting things into perspective, of course, um, for us teachers as well, we want to have physical tests, which is absolutely true. But since now we have the option from this platform where you can actually execute the test, whether online or physical, so you have both like a tangible evidence that you can keep you know, if you do it online, then you have all the reports available to be viewed. So in a way, in terms of planning, executing and, you know, making the test paper marking. So if you choose to do it online, so many of the time spent for all these processes can be cut short and you can have more time focusing on other parts of your teaching and learning in order to make lessons more engaging to students. Okay, and then the last feature that we want to talk about, and I think this is going to hopefully uh, speak to some of the um, bits you were mentioning in your challenges when we were talking at the beginning, is the task manager. So what we've shown is that there's lots of different bits of content, uh, lots of different resources uh, within our Cambridge Online Maths products, and um, uh, you know, an obvious challenge is it's quite difficult to get students to go to the right place to look at the right thing for what you're asking them to do. So what task manager allows you to do is build these little sequences of uh, resources um, and then this can be assigned and students will work their way through. So for example, we could ask them to look at the lesson notes, that's the book content that we were showing at the beginning. We could ask them to have a look at um, a walkthrough question and then do some, some of those questions, some of those topic questions that we just showed. Um, now, what's really powerful about this is when you are using those topic questions, you can actually set a threshold which will split the pathway. So the example you can see on the screen here is um, in that second um, node, you can see we've got some questions. If students score above 70%, then they'll go on one particular journey and we've asked them to do some of the exercise questions as the next step. But if they score less than 70%, then we've sent them on to do a walkthrough. 
And this is where you can get your differentiation in. City, I'm sure there's more that you want to say about this bit. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> it's like the biggest challenge for a teacher um, teaching maths is always, always about um, differentiation, um, especially when we don't stream our, our students in the classroom. So imagine like how uh, tough and challenging it would be and still are to all of us, um, whereby in terms of instructional strategies, we have to have like a different set of instructions um, to cater to the different abilities of the learners. But now when, when you see it as a flow chart here, basically it means that we now have the um, capacity and ability to actually map out all the paths that are workable, that is individualized, and that will help our students further. And this is parallel to their ability of accessing the content knowledge at that particular time. I'm pretty sure, David, that if let's say we have different threshold and we can reset this particular um, lesson again, then learners can then explore like the different parts as well, according to what we said, right? Yeah. Yes, so, if you assigned it a second time, then they'd be mm. able to come through and um, uh, yeah, depending on the thresholds on that particular attempt, if they were yeah. higher, then they would obviously go on the other path, yeah. Either um, it depends on their first attempt and the marks actually lead them to the threshold. Um, if let's say we're teaching a bottom set, we've already set like different threshold and maybe we just let the first threshold done like 30% and above, then we can actually use the same, more or less the same like flow chart, but we, it can be redone many, many times when we get the threshold a bit higher, a bit higher. So that's how we scaffold as well, so that learners can see where the projection of this particular topic will go and what are the next steps to it. Yes. So that's sort of, as I say, it's quite a quick tour through everything. I think we're almost doing well for time as well, which is really great. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> sort of uh, unexpected. Um, so just to go through some of those key points again, as I say, very soon, all of our Cambridge Online Maths products will be available through Cambridge Go. Um, the learner's book content or the student book content will all be included so that you can access that online. Um, again, we're using the exercise functionality. So those book exercises, those can be completed online and there's reporting around that. Um, often we're including additional resources and questions uh, to support each of these topics. So there's additional content in there that can be used. Um, those questions can be used in a test generator to create those custom tests for a particular topic or across topics. And then lastly, the task manager is uh, allows you to assign these resources to your class or to individual students. And that's a really useful way of directing them to um, the right place, to the right content for what you're trying to teach at that time. So I think Tina. Uh, Great, thank I'm you so much. Assuming some so, questions have come in. Yes. So the next part is we would like to do a Q and A, so we can see there are some questions coming in, and thank you for answering some of those already. So one of the key ones really were, um, can the worksheets be printed off? So. I believe this might have been answered in the chat already, but if David, you can confirm. Uh, yes, yes, I mentioned it, but yes, absolutely. Those worksheets that we showed, those are PDFs, so they can be downloaded and printed off, um, uh, so they can be completed, you know, with pen and paper. Yeah. Right. And the next one we have is. Um, my question is, why is it limited for a period of 30 days on test makers and accessing online mathematics? Um, it's from Jack from Kenya Mudasa International School. The 30 day, so um, it's possible if it's 30 days, then you've, I'm going to make some assumptions here. So I apologize if I'm making the wrong assumption. Um, we do offer trials. So if you uh, have registered on Cambridge Go, you can go in and trial these products. And those trials will be a 30 day, a limited 30 day trial. But if you've bought um, uh, one of our products, so a book with a bundle, you'll often find inside the front cover, there's a scratch off code. And the license lengths there tend to match to the duration of the course. 
So if it's an IGCSE course, then there will be a two year license in the front of the book. If it's a lower secondary uh, course, then it tends to be one year because that's um, uh, they tend to be one year courses as you go from seven to eight to nine. So the duration will will match the length of the course there. But it's possible. I know this. Sorry, again, this is a bit of an assumption. If you're seeing a 30 days, it might simply be a trial that will let you look, go in and look at the content and you can explore some of the things that we've shown today. Anybody can do that. Great, and uh, we will paste a link in a bit in the chat where you can all go and have a look on the page and uh, see how you can request a trial if you're interested. Um, so the next question I have is, do we need to pay separately to get the access to the Cambridge Online? This is a question from Kalpana. So again, um, we, we offer bundles uh, with our books. Um, so it depends on if you look, it's going to depend a little bit on the product that you're buying. But if you're um, purchasing a, a, one of our lower secondary books, you'll find that they come with access included. Um, and again, if you look on the inside of the front cover, you'll find uh, the code there and instructions on how to register and, and get set up to activate it. We also offer digital only. So if you're looking for um, uh, digital top up, if you're looking for some just extra digital access, then um, uh, we do that too. So um, yeah, those products are, are available. Have a look on the website. You'll be able to find uh, the different things there. But yes, we tend to bundle them with our, with our product, with our print product. Brilliant. So the next question is from Rita. So does each learner need to have a login ID? Uh, yes. So because, um, uh, so for their, for each of for the reporting to work and to make sure that their work is on on sort of their account, uh, they will um, uh, they will each need their own uh, their own login details. Um, again, we were saying this is soon going to all be through Cambridge Go. So there's onboarding um, support there. You can uh, create all of those accounts, and then they will be able to activate that code. As I said, this comes in the front of the book, uh, and then their work will sit in there. So as they're um, uh, as they're sort of working on these tests, working on the tasks, uh, answering all of those questions, that means their data will sit with their account. And so when you're doing reporting, you'll be able to see what they're doing. So yes, everybody will need their individual account. Right. So the next one is also from Rita. So are the worksheets available on the site now? Those worksheets, yes. If you've got a, if you've got access to it, you will be able to log in and see those uh, see those worksheets it's going to depend I think it's some subtle differences on the different products so um, we do for the lower secondary we certainly will do for the, the new IGCSE um, I don't think there is any in our A-level products um, I need to possibly need to go and check that but, uh, yes they will be there if you can see that right and there was a similar question from Sylvia as well how soon are they available but that pretty much answered it yeah, the, the current uh, lower sec sorry, just the current lower secondary yeah. titles are all published, so um, they're all available as part of the second edition, the new publishing that came out a couple of years ago. So those products are, are live for everybody. Obviously, the new IGCSE products are coming soon. So um, once they're available, I'm sure there'll be more messages around that, then uh, people will be able to look look at those as well. Great. So the next is from Sufihana, which is, will this be available for students as well? Do we need to pay for this platform? Yeah, so again, um, it's part of the bundle. So if you're buying the books and the, uh, or if you're buying the bundle, then you'll get the print book, which will come with an access or a license uh, to this as well. Great. Um, do we need to register our school to create a class in Cambridge Go? This is from Lucia. Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, yes, that's uh, definitely a really uh, important step. So to be able to see the reporting, to be able to assign work, we need to be able to have both you as the teacher and uh, your students all in the same school so that the system knows who to send it to. Um, and again, there'll be um, tutorials and support on our support site for how to do that. But very briefly, what you'll need to do is uh, register yourself on Cambridge Go and re re then register your school. Now, it might be if your school's already set up, we have a search function so you can have a look for it. Um, if, you're already, if the school's already there, you can ask to join. Um, but if not, then you can continue that uh, registration process to get your school set up. 
that will then allow you to um, upload all of your students. And again, there's support for how to do that. It's self-service, so you're not dependent on us, um, which makes life a little bit easier. Um, so you'll be able to upload everybody. And then finally, you'll need to set up those classes. Uh, and that's just um, uh, that's done within the, the product itself at the moment. But that will be a step that will let you then um, you know, assign work to a whole group of students all in one go rather than having to pick them out individually. So yes, really important to get your school set up and get everybody on boarded to be able to use some of those uh, functions that rely on, on having that relationship between you and the students uh, all together. Excellent. Um, there was also, um, is this also available for primary and um, is it available for upper secondary? Okay, so um, again, this so we currently have it for lower secondary, so that's uh, seven, eight, and nine. We don't have anything for primary at the moment, although uh, that's an interesting question. Um, but yes, for upper secondary, so for IGCSE level, we uh, we do, and there will be the new publishing that's coming out for the new curriculum, and so this will be part of that uh, part of that um, product suite there as well. So it will be coming, or it is going to be further for upper secondary, uh, but not for primary at the moment, not for lower primary at the moment. Great. So there's some more questions. So from Mahdi, um, would you please provide some guidance regarding designing standard tests based on a table of specification, question types such as knowledge, applying, and reasoning? Oh, that sounds like a pretty big question actually for something that I can answer in this particular bit. It's not quite my area of the specialty. Um, that might be one that we have to follow up with unless uh, City you've got anything that you could add to that. Um, but great question. Sorry, I don't feel I'm quite the right person to be able to help you help answer that one. Same here, David. I don't think I'm, I'm equipped okay. to at the moment. <laughs> we can also follow up on that one so we can um, find out the answers and um, send um, FAQ later. So um, that's also an option for us. Yeah, sorry, I'm not able to <laughs> not able to add anything for that one, but I wouldn't want to misspeak on it. Great, so the next one is, um, how many questions are there in total? Uh, L, S, I, G, A, L, three stages. How many questions are there in each and how many questions are there on average in each unit? Yeah, okay. Uh, again, I'm not sure I can quite answer that off the top of my head. You saw there when, so to begin with, all of the exercise questions from the book are included. Um, so there's going to be many, many questions there. But you also saw just when we showed those um, uh, those topic quizzes at the end there, we were trying to get somewhere between sort of five and ten uh, questions at each different level. So you're looking at, I don't know, somewhere between... 20 and well maybe on average about 30 questions per topic across all the different topics I mean there's quite a lot of extra questions there um, across those across those different levels so certainly for lower secondary there's going to be uh, plenty um, the same will be the case for IGCSE at A level I think the product is slightly different we don't have so many we don't have the questions in the the topic questions like that I think we focused more on the exercise questions so there will be a, a few less uh, for, for that one there. Um, but hopefully that gives you some idea of uh, the number of questions. We've, we've tried to make sure that there's, there's, a, there's a good number across all of the different topics. Brilliant. So um, there's one question from Lot. Um, does this come at any cost to the learner or the teacher? Yep. So again, um, uh, it's all wrapped into the bundle when they're when they're buying the book. So uh, that's it's not an it's not necessarily it's not an additional cost in in terms of that. Um, it's in, already included within that price there. So if you're buying the print book, have a look on the inside of the front cover. Um, if you've got a bundle, you'll see that there's a code there with some instructions. Um, so that might be the way. Brilliant. Um, there's one from Leo. Um, is there a plan to add the test function in the AL stage? Will it add the function that the teachers can create their own questions? Okay, great question. Um, we're looking at uh, 
So uh, no plans with the current editions, I don't think. Um, I can see that Tom has is in here answering questions. He might be able to sort of say a little bit more about this one. Um, I don't believe there's a plan to add that to the current editions, but when we're looking at uh, new editions, that's certainly a great question, and I'm sure something that we'll consider for, for when we're updating it. Brilliant. There's one from um, Lina Antonio. Um, does the book include all IGCSE courses? I think yes for the new editions that are coming out. So I think there will be something available for Core and Extended. Um, and also, uh, I just need to think what the other ones are. It's going to be additional and is it international as well. Tom, message me if I'm getting this wrong. I apologize. Um, uh, but yes, so there will be something there for uh, uh, for all of those new IGCSE courses coming along. Excellent. There's one from uh, Chosu, which is, when is this uh, going to be available? Thanks. Okay, yep. Yeah. So uh, as I say, the current lower secondary titles are already published, and so they are already available. Um, the new uh, IGCC publishing, I think, is coming soon. I don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't have a, a date uh, uh, in the top of my head. But um, yes, I think those are coming soon. I'm sure there'll be more messages around them. Uh, so as soon as, uh, as soon as they are, um uh, and they'll be available uh, would there be information on the website around the pub date for that there will be limited information um but we tend to update the website as soon as more information is available some of some information is already there um yeah but yeah once things are publishing then we yeah, will add Tom. more that's great. Uh, yeah, Tom's just uh, confirming with me there. Yes, there is more information on the website. So yes. um, uh, have a look for have a look for that. I'm sure we can find some links if 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 that's helpful. Yes, we'll paste some links in the in the chat also. So there's one from uh, Sergio. Um, would I be able to register my online teaching platform in which I'll do online teaching to groups of students in brackets classes, but this is not a typical school. That's a great question, Sergio. I, I'm not sure there's quite enough information I can give you a really, really good answer there. Um, it, we have looked at some integrations with different systems. So it might depend on the online teaching platform that you're using. Otherwise, it's likely that you'll have to sort of set yourself up in Cambridge Go uh, and be able to, uh, to uh, be able to use it and uh, be able to reference across uh, across the two like that. I'm sorry, I've not given you a very good answer to that one. Um, uh, but that's also okay. I think you it might depend on, I think on. it might depend on your teaching platform, but it's likely that you might have to set up your, your groups and classes a second time uh, in Cambridge Go to be able to, to be able to use the platform. Depends on what it will be, sorry. Yes. And like I said earlier, we can do a FAQ. So any information that wasn't covered here, then we can find out and send a FAQ sheet later on. Great. Um, there's a question from Hebert. Um, I've been trying to get information on how we can buy the online codes for teachers and students so that we can go paperless. Please help me with this as a matter of urgency. So uh, the first thing I would say is if you're talking to a sales rep, they should be able to help you with this. But uh, we do have um, digital only versions um, uh, available, uh, which you can see on our website. The other option is, yes, thanks, Tom, um, uh, contacting customer services. They will be able to help you with that as well. Great. And the last one in the Q&A is from Jai Shri. Uh, suggestion, space is required in the workbook for the working of the questions. Can that be provided? Again, great question. Um, I'm just going to uh, wait for <laughs> wait for Tom, who's our commissioning editor, our senior commissioning editor, to come and help me with that one. Um, 
So yes, that's apparently something that's being looked at. So that's being reviewed at the moment. So again, good question and uh, we're looking into it. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. So there are no more questions in the Q&A. And I'm just looking in the chat. I think we have covered everything. There's one more. Maybe from, yeah, Kalpana. Yeah, that was covered, actually. So looks like, yeah, we are we are done with the Q&A. So, um, oh, there's a uh, Oh, there's just one more that came in. Please, can we explain how the access codes work? Yep, sure. So um, once you've uh, registered your account on Cambridge Go, there will be a resources area with an add new resources. Clicking on that will bring up the, the options to be able to add a new resource. And so the code in the front of the book will be a scratch off. You scratch that off. Um, it'll be several digits long. I think it might be up to like 16 digits long. So put that into the add new resources bit. And when you add it, it will then um, uh, it will then activate the um, product and the license will begin. So if it's a one year license, it will uh, go from when you activate it from one year from that point on. So that's worth bearing in mind if um, you're thinking about getting everybody set up ahead of time. Don't don't do that uh, sort of too early in the year, otherwise they might finish a little bit. You want to make sure that they're they're activating at the right time. So yes, they just scratch that off, and then some, and then the product will appear in their my resources screen um, uh, for them to be able to launch and go into that dashboard that we showed at the start. So that's the way to do it. If you're buying digital only, just to go back to that earlier question uh, where somebody was saying about going paperless. Um, those will be those codes will be sent through to you uh, in an email. They'll come through in a spreadsheet. And again, you'll just be able to use those to add um, uh, into that add new resources uh, part on the website. And again, it will just activate it for you to be able to um, uh, for you to be able to start the license and then start accessing the product. Um, if you need anything else, uh, questions like this, I mean, these are really good questions. Um, often, I'd encourage people to look at the support. So, if you're on the Cambridge Go website, the support button is in the top right-hand part of the screen. Um, and if you go there, you'll be able to find lots of FAQs and little things around this about how to activate a product, how to uh, register your school if you're not wanting to do that. Um, and we've got some tutorials coming up, which will hopefully be getting added soon, which will help you setting up classes and groups and those things as well. So that's always a good place to start um, if you've got those sorts of questions. Hopefully that's helped answer that one for everybody there. Brilliant. So there was two more. They're a bit more specific, so we could pick these later. So there are some of the, about the curriculum changes and um, how to generally improve, improve qualifications. So we can generally pick these later um, in an FAQ document. So that is great. So. Excellent. So, yeah, thank you so much, City and uh, David, for your presentations. And I also want to thank everyone who was able to join today. And we hope to be seeing you in some of our upcoming webinars as well. So after the webinar ends, please kindly spend two minutes uh, to respond to our post-webinar survey. So your feedback is much appreciated. And uh, so yeah, thank you again so much for everyone to join. And uh, yeah, take care, everyone, and stay safe. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. Lovely to speak to you. Thank you, everyone. Hope to see you next time.